O sunshine team, what a blessing you are going to be to people here in the Idaho region uh, for the next couple of days. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I'd like to share a short devotional thought with you on the Gospel of John chapter 5. And uh, it's a devotional I love to share, especially when I'm around health professionals and, and people who are excited about health. Because there's a message in there about Jesus and how he brings miraculous healing to people through their physical and spiritual health. And in the Gospel of John, you may or may not know, there are only seven miracles recorded in the Gospel of John. Did you know that? And uh, this is the third miracle in John. John chapter 5, beginning in verse 1, it says, Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which is in Aramaic is called Bethesda which simply means house of mercy. And it says there that there were five covered colonnades that were all around this sheep gate pool that Jesus was visiting one afternoon as he was out for a walk. And it says here a great number of disabled people used to lie there, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed, and one who had been there was an invalid for 38 years. And it says that he lay there as a paralyzed man. So you can picture this. Jesus is near the Jewish temple. And outside the temple there is a sheep gate pool. It is a pool where they would bring the sheep to wash before they would sell them to be sacrificed. And there at that same pool, hundreds of people gathered around that pool because they believed in a superstition. And the superstition was that when an angel would come and touch the water, the pool would be rippled and the first one in would be healed. Quite something to believe. And here they had the Savior, Jesus, right there in their midst, the one who has the power to heal. And they didn't even know it. Jesus, when he came that afternoon, looked at these hundreds of people. He heard all the bleeding of the sheep. He began to smell the stench. Now, I'm not a sheep herder. I'm not a farmer. I don't know much about it, but maybe you do. When sheep get wet, what happens? They get very heavy, and they get very smelly. And so Jesus wasn't just out for an afternoon walk to enjoy. Jesus went right where the people are. Jesus was on mission. He wanted to serve people and he wanted to bring healing into their lives. And these people were, in many cases, very desperate. He wanted to heal them all. But he came to the one who was likely there the longest. He came to the one that you may describe as being uh, the worst case scenario. A man who had been lame for 38 years. Now it may not mean too much to you to talk about his age. But back then, 2,000 years ago, the average person, their life span, the average lifespan was 40. So this particular man was there on his last leg of the journey. He was in a desperate plight. And Jesus wanted to bring healing into his life, just like I believe you do, wanting to bring healing and tenderness and kindness into the lives of the people that you're going to serve tomorrow and Friday. Jesus saw him lying there. He learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, and he asked him a very strange question. And it's a question that he asks today of you and me. 
and any other person on this planet. He said, get ready. He said to the man, and picture this, picture it if it was you. He said, do you want to get well? It's yes, amen. It's a great question. But can you imagine the man? He's there for 38 years, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. And someone comes up and says, do you want to get well? And he says, duh. <laughs> it's like asking a child if they want to spank you, right? Duh. No. It's, he thought, could this be my mat mates playing a joke on me? Could this be sarcasm? Jesus was 100% serious because Jesus knew that he is the guy who heals. He says, I heal broken bodies, broken minds, broken hearts, broken lives, and broken relationships. Amen. Jesus knows that in his presence, just being in his presence, there is immense healing power. And did you know that you cannot live close to Jesus without experiencing some degree of healing. And so he said, do you want to get well? And no pun intended, but the man made a lame excuse. And he said, sir, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. And Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And at once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. On that particular day, impotence meant omnipotence. And Jesus the Savior, Jesus, the Lord of Lords, and the God of the galaxies was there at that sheep gate pool 2,000 years ago. And Jesus is going to be here today, tomorrow, and Friday with you. And he's asking the same question. He's asking you, first of all, do you want to get well? And every single one of us needs to realize that we are sick with sin, we suffer, we need all kinds of healing. And those who come to this Idaho Sunshine event are no different than you or me. They need the same kind of healing. Every single person is a child of the Heavenly King, no matter their choices, no matter their circumstances. And you get the privilege of being the hands and the feet of Jesus. And what a blessing that's going to be. And if anyone is going to be blessed, you are going to be blessed the most. Because you have made a commitment to serve on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ through this very special, very incredible ministry of service. Idaho sunshine. So may God bless you, and I look forward to being here with you tomorrow to experience it all as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Pastor Randy? Where's Pastor Randy? Uh, you Pastor Randy? Hide. I met you earlier. The boss, Steve, says, have prayer, and I'm saying, hey, there are other people who can pray, and I know you are extremely excited about Idaho Sunshine bringing it all the way from Arizona. Yes, it's been a journey already, but it's been a good journey. Uh, you want me to talk to your mic? Yeah, I can't do that. Don't you? Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, what an awesome opportunity to come here to this place and minister to people that may have never really heard your name or in the right way, don't know you, 
Uh, Lord, we want to uh, be a reflection of Jesus. We want to have these people come in here and see him through us. Lord, we just pray for a special outpouring of your Holy Spirit as we move forward with this program that belongs to you, that we've all made that commitment to, because we believe this is what you've called us to do. So Lord, we just pray again for that special, special presence and that blessing that comes from your presence with us and what we're doing. We pray that you give us wisdom and heart and loving words to speak to each person in the right way, that they will see you and not us. So Lord, I thank you for this, and we thank you for answering this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor uh, Randy. Thank you, Mr. President, for being here. I had to book the president five years ago before he even came to this conference. Just, just kidding. First of all, welcome again. I'm hoping that you like my jersey. Wrong team. <laughs> Boo. We did give a Raiders jersey at one time. Yeah, I burned it. Anyway. <laughs> Actually, you should have seen his face. <laughs> Donnie did give me a jersey, a Raiders jersey, and I used it to wash my car. <laughs> you know, uh, can you believe it? We have uh, one lady who showed up at 10 o'clock this morning, and she's going to wait all night. She's out there right now. I invited her to come get a bite to eat. Oh, there she is right there. And you know, she plays the recorder. We should have her have music here. What do you think, man? That'd be awesome. You should hear her play the recorder out there. That's good. Bring it tomorrow as well. 
keep it with you at all times on that. So make sure you have a badge before you leave. That's very, very important. Okay, let's talk about the schedule. Like I said, 6 o'clock or 6.30. And our idea is to have the chaplains, the chaplains be outside. We have a granola bar that we're going to give to our guests. We suspect that probably be by the time the gates open, the doors open at 7 a.m., probably be a couple hundred people standing in line. Chaplains will be there to give out granola bars and to, you know, kind of, they'll be apprehensive, they'll be on edge to calm the nerves. So that's what chaplains are, Randy? Yes, good point. They're also, they're also going to be handing out a clipboard for them to fill out the paperwork so they can get a head start on that. Good point. Thank you very much on that. Um, like I said, the door will open at 7. Uh, then that's when the fun begins at 7 a.m. Now, some of you who work in the other departments, uh, by the time they stay through and get through to you, it'll probably be uh, an hour or two later, but they eventually will come to your various departments. Triage is going to be crushed at first. Registration, they always first. And then probably by noon, uh, triage and registration will pretty much be done. Because that's, again, from our experience. Um, registration closes at 1. And at 11.30, we've got Ruben Rodriguez, who's done an excellent job contacting the city mayor, city councilman. I believe he has a senator coming. There's also some other VIPs. So at 11.30, He's going to be giving tours to all these VIPs. We have been told we have marketed, we have partnership with a marketing company called Knock. It's supposed to be one of the better ones in the see here. We've been told that there's supposed to be live ABC cameras here tomorrow. So I don't know, you know, I mean, that's what I've been told by Knock Company. So if you're on camera, smile or open. <laughs> Because this will probably be on the 5 o'clock news and the 11 o'clock news. Well, we'll see what happens on that. Um, okay, um, so, so like I said, Thursday schedule is set up for you. Um, and then on Friday kind of mirrors what happens on Thursday. Now again, from our experience from Arizona, um, probably Friday afternoon, noon, maybe 1 o'clock, registration will start closing down. Triage will start closing down. Our goal is to be out of this building, out of, out of the fairgrounds by 7 p.m., if possible, because several reasons why. Um, and so, like I said, there will be, Randy is going to be dealing with the closing. Um, anyway, let's go to uh, number, and if you all got this uh, orientation, orientation uh, summary sheet, Okay, can you follow me number 5G? Are you there? 5G. Sorry, 2G. I have a different schedule, sorry about that. 2G, okay. Um, all questions need to be taken to department heads. Um, and too many times, again, from our experience in Arizona, one, one volunteer will go to another volunteer or they'll go to another person and say, what's going on? Folks, the best thing you can do as a volunteer is to say, I don't know. <laughs> okay, if a guest comes up to you and asks you a question, just say, that's a good question, let me find the answer. When misinformation is given, because what happens, folks, first of all, our guests, they're, just, they're very anxious and, and you want to please them. Trust me, because you see the, the anxiety in their face, and you do anything to please them. So you say things you should not say. And we have caused more headaches in the past because a volunteer told another person, one of the guests, yes, yeah, sure, you're gonna see dental, no problem. Oh, wow. That guest was so mad, they just stomped out because they were promised something they wanted so bad by a volunteer who did not know the answer. So we're, we're pleading with our volunteers, especially with our guests, do not give in information you do not know about. If it's another, if somebody had a question about vision, say, good question. You know, I'm gonna ask you to go to the vision part. By the way, every, hopefully every one of our guests will be escorted by a hospitality person. 
And the hospitality person hopefully will be able to guide them. Okay? So that's where we're at on that one. So that's very, very important to keep that in mind. Um, number, letter H. Randy Fields. Randy, where's, your, where's Randy? Yeah. Randy, there he is. Randy is our chief logistic guy. He also makes the determine when departments close. Again, folks, in the past, oh, this has been a headache because one department head went to another and says, are you closed? Yeah, I think I'll close. Not their choice. It's Randy's decision to make when a department closes. If you folks have any questions about departments, Randy's gonna be running around with it. You're gonna have pollution on tomorrow? Yeah. There. And so you need to ask him. He's gonna have a radio. By the way, all department heads will have a radio. Most of our security people will have radios. And if you have a question, you, you need to ask where you flag somebody down with a radio, if they don't know the answer, they'll call Randy. Okay? And then by the way, Randy's top assistant, they're off. Where's Daryl? Oh man, all right. Daryl will also have a radio. He's working with Randy as a troubleshooter too. Folks, basically anybody with a radio, if you have a question, ask them and if they don't know the answer, they will find something else, okay? But that, again, that's so important, folks, that you make sure that you do not tell anybody Dennis, dentistry is still open or dentistry is closed. Please, we can't emphasize this, don't tell anybody anything about anything. <laughs> Except the bathroom. There you go. The other thing I want to say, folks, is we're going to have some children for, with our kids, maybe kind of wandering around. This is very, very important. If you see something, say something. If you see a child by himself, first of all, maybe you should go with that child, and then second of all, get a security guard. By the way, when you approach a child by themselves, find another adult and approach them together. Don't ever go to a child by yourself. Okay? But listen folks, we're all volunteers. We're here, to, we're here as a family to help each other. And if you see something that's going on that you're not sure about, whatever, you need to address it, okay? Now, I hate to bring this up, but unfortunately in our society, you have to bring it up. We are a soft target. And if you see if you see somebody maybe that one of our guests that's carrying an AK-47 under their contact a security guard. By the way, we have a security team that's going to be there. They are trained security teams, so they will be here as well. But anyway, we just need to be make sure that we're safe. I don't want to you know, scare anybody. But we that's the society we live in today, folks. And if you see something that you're not sure about, please let's act on it because you're the eyes and ears the whole campus, all right? So that's one thing that's very important. Okay, um, logistics. Randy, you want to say a few words about logistics and then we'll go and we'll continue on with the, the agenda. One of the things you want to make sure is uh, with the questions, uh, I think Steve uh, cleared that up. <coughs> uh, don't answer questions with the answer that you don't know for sure. Uh, I'm telling you it's, it's caused more headache than you want to deal with. But go to the lead for your department, and uh, I didn't get a chance to get this with, with Steve. I, I described this the way we want this to work. The leads will call dispatch and tell dispatch, which is Daryl, okay, and tell them which person they need basically tell them what they need, okay? So those people that you're know, probably be looking for for answers is Donnie, myself, and Steve, and Daryl will kind of... Let, let me explain it this way. I'm used to walking the floor with a, with a, uh, a radio and not being able to go from one side of the building to the other in, in 30, 45 minutes because we keep getting stopped. This way, it's more efficient and we can get to your issue or question quicker if we just let Daryl know who you need, okay? So all of your leads are gonna be on the same channel 
so they have to get to the barrel as quickly as possible and we get that problem solved quickly. In other words, because if they go on the radio and ask for me or they ask for Donnie, sometimes we're in the middle of something we can't get to it. And by the time we can't get to it, we're dealing with three more things and we never get to it because there's too many things on the list. So Daryl will track that so we make sure we get to each, each and every one of them, okay? Um, that might make us smoother. I don't know, we'll find out. If it's not smoother, well, at least we tried, okay? So, um, yes? Are you going to introduce us to all these people who are supposed to know who you and me and me? Each department has their lead, and you'll know who your lead is. And you should have your list right there. Do you have your list? Whoever says the lead is, that's who you're going to be looking for. So, doc, for instance, Dr. Tom <laughs> Woods is on the medical. That's where you're going to find her, is the medical. So, and she'll have a tag on that says Dr. Woods. Uh, Dr. Lee is back there. He's over dental. Uh, so if you're having a problem, uh, it's, it's on him. Okay? <laughs> um, but each department has a lead. And, they, and they're, that way, it gets the problems get, and there won't be things that come up. There's no question. I mean, stuff happens. So uh, we just want to make sure that we get to it quickly and efficiently. And the quickest way to do that is make sure you go to your lead. The lead will make sure it gets to one of us that need we're needed. A lot of times the lead can take care of it because they're already needed. So. And, any other questions on that? I'm not sure. One thing we want to uh, let you folks know, I, I didn't put out this on the handout, but I'll just share it with you. Um, Pat? Where's Pat? Pat, could you stand up so everyone can see your beautiful face? There she is. I want you to, Pat, to still, still stand, please. In the past again, and I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I apologize, I keep on saying the past because it's all we can go by the last 10 years in Arizona when we've done this Arizona Sunshine. If you have personal belongings, a backpack, et cetera, et cetera, we're going to have a security place that you can put your personal belongings at. All right? And Pat, what you're building seven. He's a, she's building seven, which is, I believe, right over here. When you arrive, if you have a backpack, et cetera, et cetera, you go, because you have a person at that station. Yeah. Donnie says, make sure you go back through the back door, all right? And you can leave your backpack, your credit card number, cash. <laughs> okay, thank you, Pat. But anyway, she's the one you can leave your personal belongings to, and she has, she, and she's very thorough, and she's so awesome. Somebody, there'll be at least one or two people at all times with that area. They will not leave that. So, like I said, you know, I have to tell you, when we were doing our Arizona Sunshine, we had the Mesa Convention Center, huge convention center. And so we told everyone, the volunteers, and this one guy with a backpack said, he didn't, he said, he said, ah, I'm just going to put it in my department. It's against the curtain here. I'm going to hide it. <clears throat> and uh, he went to work just for a couple hours, came back, his backpack was stolen. He had his wallet, his car keys, everything there. Now I'm not saying, folks, that this is going to happen, but again, safety. Keep that in mind. Okay, there's a question. Yes? To clarify, that's only for volunteers and not for guests. Thank you for clarifying that. Guests hang on their own stuff. All right? The volunteers, like I said, if you have something you really don't want to watch all day, she well, watch it like a hawk, okay? It will be, it will be well protected, okay? So that's where you go, folks, to Building 7 in the back door. Okay, let's continue on, please. Um, <clears throat> let's go to the next number here. Um, that is, thank you. What's the Sunshine model? Be flexible. Let's say, it, let's say it one more time. Be flexible. Trust me, folks, and this Visit with our volunteers. That was our guest. Because one volunteer will misunderstand another volunteer, and there will be upset volunteers. One time we almost had a fight among the volunteers. Because they disagreed. 
Folks, so that's what we want to do is, and that leads us to the next one. Our key text is Ephesians 4.32. Let's read it together. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Be kind and compassionate. All right? Because our guests, they see what's going on, and we're just praying to the good Lord that this first year, 2024, would lead into 2025. Amen. And these guests, let me tell you something, folks. They're not stupid. When they see volunteers get that little scrimmage, they tell their friends, oh, that high of sunshine, yeah, those, those volunteers were kind of mad at you. Yeah. They talk. But you know what? On the other side, these guests that come through your door say, wow. I know sunshine is so awesome. I'm going to tell all my friends for 2025. We are, we are making a foundation for next year, folks. Do we understand that? Yes. That leads us to the next one. There are people here this week who do not get the service they came for. Never promise or imply they will receive service. Be kind but truthful. Not all dental vision services are available at this event, and there are almost always more people at the event than we can serve or time allows. Most of our guests are very thankful for our service, but be mindful, there are a few guests who get upset and manipulate the situation. And so what they will do, and this happens a lot, and I'm not saying guests are wrong by doing this, one guest will go to another volunteer and say, ask them a question, and then go to another volunteer and say, wait a minute, this volunteer told me that I could get in line. So what they do? So again, folks, let's get back to use your common judgment, all right, on this whole thing. So that's, just kind of keep that in mind. All right, let's go quickly to any questions and answers you have before. Go ahead. I just want to uh, warn you ahead of time what's going to be the biggest thing you're going to run into is on the, when they come in, they sign in, it's very clear. Each day, there's there's two things on there that they can only do one per day. Dental and vision. Now, does everybody understand what those are? It's called dental and vision. And that's where you're going to run into the most, uh, the most stress, okay? That's where I'm going to run into the stress. Because, um, can you imagine anyone would want to try to jump line and go to the other one? Uh, it's going to happen, okay? And they're going to tell you, well, so-and-so said I could. So if so somebody says so-and-so said I could, I want to know that that's nobody in this room, okay? You can't jump line. If you're in dental, you're in dental. If you're signed up for vision, you're in vision. That means you can do everything else with it, but you can only do one of those per day. Now, we had a situation for one of those, we actually got done with everybody that asked for help for that, and he was asked, can this person come from, they're done in dental, can they go over to vision? And we had nobody else in line. Have we done something like that? Yeah, we have, but there's only one person that can do that. Maybe. And why would we do that? No confusion. That way everybody knows what's going on. That's the only reason we do that, because if you have too many people trying to make a decision on that, you're going to get confusion pretty quickly. You have 10 people said, oh, well, they said I could go. So we don't want that to happen. So that, you understand what we're trying to do? We just want to make it as smooth as possible with the least amount of frustration. So one or the other, and if they ask if they can change, the answer is what? No. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And then pass it on to you. To you. Thank you, Pastor Randy. Like I said, folks, I don't. We just can't emphasize this enough. If you don't know, just say I don't know. And trust me, tomorrow many of you are going to experience these guests with anxiety in the face, and you you'll want the human natural thing is to please them, and you're going to. You're just to say something that you should not say, all right? So I'm just telling you, please have, please uh, have mercy on the administration because we've gone through a lot of headaches because one volunteer said something or promised something to guests that we could not fulfill, and it really 
as I said in our orientation, the number one question we get from our guests is, why are you doing this? I mean, that's the number one. The number one rule with our guests, you do not cut line. That's, I mean, it's just, and if you cut line, that makes them very upset. Okay, let's do a few minutes of question and answers here. Any questions you might have on anything? Pat, Pat, sorry. Absolutely. But if they're in here, they're okay. They can just 
Right. Yeah, because we're going to have, we're here setting right now, there's going to be some vendors, we call them vendors, not, there's nothing for sale here. But they're going to be here, and uh, so they'll, and they'll have many people waiting for dental here, people waiting for dental here. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, this is where the restaurant you have people. They're on their own and they need to do that. <laughs> but yeah, so here's here's the let me let me share the flow with you guys so you understand. Maybe that'll help. They come in that far door down there at the front. By the way, all volunteers come through the door on the side over there then that, that way it's separate. There should be signing right, right, right by where you picked up your tag. Yeah. So you come in there as a volunteer. That make that'll make it a lot easier. They see you coming through this other door, and they're going, oh, well, somebody's got the line. Um, so, you know, that line. so they're going to come in there, they're going to register there, and then they go to triage, and then they go to banding, and then they come through that door this way. So the next room is all medical, and then massage, and let's say photo that's over here. Dental is there, so if they're coming to dental, that, that person needs the hospital needs to bring them to dental. Because if they hesitate, they'll find themselves for the back of And that's not their fault. You know. So you bring them directly to where they need to go. So I'm hoping that we can set something up here so that uh, people that are going to vision it, they can keep track of the order that they're here so that they, because they can only fit so many over here. How many they get? Uh, how many can you see? No, no, no. How many people are you going to see over there oh, waiting? Seat. Waiting. Um, right now, we're able to do about 30 Total? Or is that in the first part? That's all the way through. Okay. That's I think different. the first, what's the first part? The first part? Uh, yeah. Because you're going to get a group of people over there and until you get some of them moved out of that group, you've got to stop. So make sure there's communication. But we'll have. Uh, we need to put a sign-up sheet here for them, so they want to come here, and if we don't have a room, then you can, then you can say, hey, I just didn't find a room, and this is the next five hundred Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just I try to dodge you guys and not get one, but I guess I may have one to um, So does that make sense? That's the flow. That we're coming to here. Then they have to come. The X? Yeah. Uh, I'm right. <laughs> so, so they're going to come back here. So they don't leave from out here. They have to come back here. And then they go back down that hall and make a right. And you know, there's a door on that side. There's a door on this side. On this side is where the chaplains are going to be. They're going to ask them to fill out a exit survey. On that exit for survey, is gonna, they're going to talk about how to treat them. They're going to ask them gonna ask all kinds of questions. Like, but more importantly, we're going to ask them questions about what they would be interested in. Would they be interested in Bible studies? Would they be interested in cooking class? All of those different things are on that exit survey. They're going to do that. Let's wait a second. Okay. So that that's right to the door out there in that end of the building. As you go through the door, they'll make a right. Chaplains, has everybody got that? Exit survey. Very, this is the most important part. I'll just tell you that, the most important part is because we've given them service, now we want to know how they feel about it and we want to know if they want to follow up so we can continue contact with those people. And then the next one is uh, medical records. Uh, because these are medical records, we can't have them leave with those, but we can give them a copy of them. That's what they do. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Any other questions for me? It's in this small area right here. Can you see that? Anytime they feel like it. Yeah, they're gonna be they're gonna be kind of scattered around here because it's, 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 these buildings are contained, so they're gonna be wandering and they'll be coming to you eventually. So oh, nice. they need to check in with dental or vision first, and then they yeah, can and then they have access to right. Now, 
Let me let me share something with you on that. Here's why people will be wandering in here. Steve just talked about how long it took us to get this figured out over the last 10 years. Everything in here is now electronically connected. Once they come to dental and they're in the system, then they're in order. They can come around here and they actually have it set up so that when it's, that it's getting ready for their time to come back and then go into dental, they can actually contact them on their phone. So it's connected. Vision has the same ability. Medical has the same ability. It's all connected. So they don't lose their place in line. That used to be an issue because we didn't have any of that, so they weren't afraid to lose their place in line. Now we don't do that, so they can't lose their place in line, and we can show them that. That way they can enjoy all of everything else. Yeah, one, one, one thing, folks, that you should know where all the chairs are set up, there's going to be several candidates. We have, I think, 13 organizations that can be represented from. ABC, you ever heard of the ABC? <laughs> uh, Shine radio station, Panhandle.